Right, in this video I'm going to try a little experiment with my uh, Z045 pinhole camera. I'm going to use it at the extreme wide angle and um, that would be 25mm and that really is wide. Uh, I'm going to photograph some flowers uh, looking upwards. So I've got all the uh, tackle ready, got my bag, uh, tripod and uh, so I'll just go in the back garden now and um, get it set up and I'll show you the setup, take the picture, get the neg negative developed and let you see that, see if it turns out. So the subject, as you can see, uh, for this photograph is the tulips and I'm going to use my 045 pinhole camera with just one panel. Uh, that means that at that size I've got um, a focal length of 25mm and on this camera that is extreme wide angle. So it means that I can get really near to uh, subjects and because um, pinhole cameras have got infinite depth of field have no problems with focusing. Sometimes it just pays to experiment with your pinhole camera because you never know uh, what you're going to get unless you try it. I don't know if this will work but it, it's worth a try. So I'm going to uh, set the camera up and fix a, an orange filter. I'm going to use an orange filter just to maybe add a little bit more contrast and, and hopefully darken the blue sky a little bit. So I'll get the camera And I'm going to um, disassemble it using the elastic bands. And as I say, I'm just going to use the one panel. And then using a uh, blue tack, I'm going to stick that in the back of the camera it straight like that so it's covering the pinhole so that's fixed now it's not going to fall out so I'm going to um, be using Ilford FP4 I'm going to de develop that in um, a developer two-part developer called uh, Diafine um, which gives a speed increase on most films so um, FP4 is normally rated at 125 I'm going to rate it at 200 ISO and see what results uh, we get. Again, I'm experimenting, but if you don't experiment, you don't learn. So I'm going to put the dark slide in and get the camera positioned and set up and take the photograph. Again, I'm fastening it together with as we call them in Yorkshire, laggy bands. Now once that's on it's quite secure. So get the camera on the tripod. See how close I can get in. It's probably quite difficult with this but
little bit lower. level all right Bit the cable release and then we to take a, a light reading with my ISO set to 200. Just check a spot reading to test up the darkish area if I can. So I'm getting 30th of a second uh, F22. That's with the uh, orange filter um, filter factor applied. It was up to 60 of a second. It's at 30 of a second. So now just to check on my phone uh, the time for the pinhole size. So I've shown this before in another video, but I'll show you again. I go to my photos, uh, look for the panel. That's 25 millimeter. That's the 25 millimeter panel, and then I look to 30th. Whoops, it's twisting around. Uh, 30th of a second at f22 is 1.3 seconds at f138. I think it's f138. Yeah, f138. So then I go back into the reciprocity timer, look for Ilford FP4, and I'm going to use two seconds because it was at 1.3 so I'd rather overexpose than under and that's given me a time of three seconds exposure right so I'll take the picture now that slide out have to get really low down with this because that uh, that 25 millimeter if I was stood here I would be in the picture we've actually got some uh, you probably can't see it's a washing hanging on the line there I wouldn't be surprised if I get uh, that, some of that washing I'll probably get this tree in and this uh, this arch uh, at, the, at the side here where the gate is but my idea is to crop into this picture I might do it in square format so so dark slide out I'm going to take the exposure, just wait till they stop moving as much. And take the exposure 1001, 1002, 1003. And that's the exposure. Put the dark slide back. Take the camera off. and get that developed and uh, see what, how it turns out as I say I've not got a clue really <laughs> but I'm just hoping I might get something a little bit different from the norm so I'm back on the computer now uh, you know when you're doing videos um, shooting them live uh, setting up pictures and, and taking the photograph it's always quite nerve-wracking always in the back of your mind you're thinking I hope uh, the picture turns out because if it does it makes the video more enjoyable so this is the big reveal this is the truth we're going to see if this picture that I've taken is worthy of hanging on a wall or I've just made a complete and utter pig's ear of it so this is the scanned picture the raw file that I've scanned in view scan 
and uh, looking at this picture, I'm very pleased with it. The only things I don't like is some dark uh, artefacts in the sky. Uh, there's not many, there's one there, two, three, four, maybe one there. I don't know what's caused that, I don't think it's the developer, I'm sure it's something to do uh, with the pinhole camera. So that's the raw scan, as I say I'm very pleased, let's look at the actual edited picture now. And we can compare and see how much editing I've actually had to do on the picture. So that's the edited picture, and this is the raw scan. And as you can see, all I've done in this picture, obviously I've cleaned it up a little bit, removed the marks. But I've also just increased the contrast slightly and, and uh, lightened the picture a touch. And uh, I do like it. Originally I was going to do it in a square format. But seeing it now, I'll keep it at this size. I also like the way the, the uh, pinhole has flared. And it's uh, formed a, a light streaks of light coming in from the top uh, right corner. Uh, how it connects with the light on the flowers. So I'm going to leave that, that, uh, that flare in. So yeah, overall, very pleased with that. I also like the way the orange filter has uh, darkened down the blue sky. It's revealed a little bit of cloud, so that's worked fine. There's some white marks you can see radi radiating out to the edges. That's to do with the way the pinhole renders on the film. It's something that you do see a lot in pinhole images. It's all part and parcel of pinhole photography, and it's something that you've uh, got to accept. I also mentioned in the video that I might get some trees in the picture. Well, I have. On the right-hand side, you can see there's a tree there. There's even uh, the archway that leads to the wood in our back garden. And there's a tree on the bottom uh, right and on the left. The actual coverage uh, on a 25mm pinhole camera on 4x5 film, as you can see, it's, uh, it's enormous. But there's one thing with this. Because at 25mm, we do get some uh, vignetting, that's darkening of the edges of the picture. It sort of subdued these trees and kept it in the background. And I don't think the impact on the picture in any way, the, the, the tulips just uh, stand out fine. So I'm not too bothered about the trees in the picture. The one thing I am glad about is that I didn't have a washing line in the picture. So that's a bonus. This is the um, picture that I put in a forks frame, as I call it. Because I think pictures should, should be seen this way. So as I say, it's a, it's a false frame. But it gives you an idea what the picture is going to look like when it's uh, framed and mounted. See what you think and just leave a comment uh, below. I'm also very pleased the way the developer Diaphine has developed this picture. If we take a, a look, and I'll zoom right into this. I'm at um, two, no, just over 200%. These petals on the flowers were uh, really bright. It was in full sun. And there's not one area blown on those petals where the highlights are. And I'm also uh, pleased the way it's rendered the film grain. Uh, keep in mind that this is FP4, which is uh, normally rated around, I, I rate mine at 80 ISO, but the actual manufacturer's rating is 125 ISO. This is uh, rated at 200 ISO, so it's up the ISO, but it doesn't have, appear to have uh, increased the grain size. It's still quite uh, fine grain at that speed rating. And as I say, this is a viewing at 200, just over 200% on the computer screen. If you've never heard of Diaphine, uh, just Google uh, Diaphine on the net and there's uh, quite a few articles about it and it, you could find it very interesting. It's a, a great all-purpose developer. The only problem with Diaphine is trying to find where you can buy it in the UK. I can't find anywhere you can get it. The place where I bought my last batch from and I've just checked, they've got it, they've actually got it in stock, is a shop in Germany. I've bought from them a few times with no problem, so that's where you can buy it. Diaphine can sometimes, when you first buy it, seem expensive compared to other developers, but because it uh, lasts so long, it literally goes on for years. In the long run, it works out very, very uh, cheap. So, all in all, I think the pictures turned out fine. I like the composition. Uh, remember I couldn't see what I was doing, I was just doing it by experience. I like the way it's rendered the light coming in and I like the way the orange filters darken the sky down and increase the contrast. So all in all, I'm a very happy chappy. So that's the end of the video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the content and uh, picked a few uh, tips up on the way. If you did like the video, please give me a like. 
or better still subscribe to my channel I like the picture so much that I took with the pinhole camera that I've done a, an actual print of it and this is the print here and uh, if you want to support my channel then I'm going to put this print on eBay for auction I'll do it at a low starting price of a pound and see where it goes uh, it's printed on uh, Epson cold press bright paper uh, it's a lovely matte textured paper I've also printed it with a delicate warm tone I do that with all my pictures and it really does look nice the actual size is 16 by 12 I've left a white mount around the picture to uh, facilitate uh, mounting the picture before framing and uh, also it's a one of one so I'm not going to be printing any more so if you did win this at auction it's a unique print and nobody else will have it so as I say if you want to support the channel uh, go to the link in the description to the eBay auction and uh, put a bid in. Right, so that's it. Uh, once again, uh, thank you for watching. If you have any, any questions regarding pinhole photography, just leave a message below and I'll get back to you. And uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.